Hello everybody and welcome back to another GeekerWatt video. Today I'm going to be building a $1000 gaming PC build for 2020 using all the components behind me. Not only am I going to put it together showing you the parts I've used, but then I'm also going to install loads of games on this machine later on in today's video so you can see exactly how it performs. So make sure to stick around for that, but without any further ado, let's jump into it. Now, any good gaming PC build starts off with our motherboard and our CPU. This combo is a tried and tested one for me. The motherboard is MSI's B450 Tomahawk Max. That max wording means it's guaranteed to work with Ryzen 3rd gen out of the box, and it's got every other feature you could possibly need, including four RAM DIMM slots. The CPU I opted to go for is this, the AMD Ryzen 5 3600. It's got a base clock speed of 3.6 with a turbo up to 4.2 gigahertz with six cores and 12 threads. It really does tick all the boxes. You install it like so, simply line the triangle on your CPU up with the triangle on the socket and pop that lever down. I'm actually gonna be sticking with the included AMD stock cooler. It's really, really fantastic for this build and that will make a little bit more sense later on in today's video. In order to install that, we just need to first take off uh, the pre-installed uh, CPU cooler mounting hardware. I would advise keeping these bits safe because you never know when you're going to need them again. Now the cooler does come with thermal paste pre-applied, but because I've used it a couple of times, I need to pop on my own. You really don't need much, so uh, don't overdo it, don't get too excited. Installing your CPU cooler is then as easy as lining it up uh, with the holes in the motherboard backplate. and tightening each of the screws down in turn. You then want to run the four pin fan header and just pop that uh, at the top of your motherboard. That's gonna allow the fan to spin up nicely when the system is powered up. Now that's done, we can move on to our RAM or our memory. This is a 16 gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro and I actually went for it there we go, went for it in white, which is gonna match our case and a couple of fans and other bits, and that will all come to make a bit more sense later. Now actually installing our memory is really easy. Pull back the retention clips on DIMM slots two and four to give us our dual channel performance, and line the notch on the memory up with the notch on the motherboard. Once you've slid it into place, apply even pressure to both sides and the memory and the memory dim, sorry, will slot in just like so. Repeat for as many dims as you've got, and you're quite literally off to the races. For the next stage of the build process, we're gonna shove our motherboard aside for a minute and take our case. This is the Corsair 275R Airflow, and you can see with all the ventilation at the front, this is gonna keep our temperatures nice and cool, and everything as quiet as possible. Uh, with any case, I recommend you strip it back, basically taking off as many panels as you can. Siri interrupting me there, taking off as many panels as you can, um, within reason, of course. With the case all stripped back, it's gonna be so much easier to finish off the rest of the build. We're gonna be installing our motherboard using these screws that come included with the case accessory box. Before popping the motherboard in though, remember to clip in that IO shield. If you forget to do this now, I feel very sorry for you later. <laughs> Okay then, with our motherboard, CPU, RAM and case all sorted out, uh, I'm gonna pop in some Corsair Light Loop RGB fans. Now this is an optional step, you can save some money uh, by not going with these, but they're gonna look so, so good. So just trust me on this one.
Those fans are going to look so good through that mesh front panel, I actually can't wait. But first it's time for our graphics card. I actually selected the RTX 2060 Super. Now some people might be looking for a 5700 XT build and I did one of those just before Christmas for the same price point. So it'll be interesting to see how they um, perform against one another. The 2060 Super though is a great card. The 60 designation is perhaps a bit misleading given just how powerful a GPU this is. 1414p? 1440p, sorry, at 60 FPS in most titles is going to be the sweet spot, but as we'll hopefully see in a minute, a bit of 4K gaming is more than possible. For the penultimate component in today's build, we have of course got our storage. And rather than going for an expensive M.2 drive and a hard drive, I've actually just picked up a 1TB SanDisk SSD+. Plus. Not the fastest SSD on the market, but very affordable and way quicker than any uh, hard drive option out there. Plus a thousand gigs of capacity gives you plenty of room for uh, your Steam and Origin libraries and that kind of thing. If you know you need a bit more, pick up a two terabyte hard drive for an extra $50. But for most people, this is gonna work perfectly. We're then gonna grab a SATA data cable uh, and plug that into the back of the drive, spin the case around, and we're gonna slide the drive back into the cage like so. It's as easy as that. I'm also gonna run some of our front panel cables, so our USB 3 here, our HD audio there, and our front panel like power and reset um, as well. I would just advise looking at the motherboard manual because it's got detailed diagrams, as it can vary on a motherboard by motherboard basis and they're really fiddly. <laughs> now that the system is pretty much all assembled, all that's left to do is a bit of cable management and to pop our power supply in. The Corsair CX750M is the ideal choice. It's affordable, though for latest pricing, I'll link everything in the description below. Has got plenty of wattage for a bit of future proofing and all black cables, which are gonna make the aesthetic and keep that aesthetic nice and sleek, I should say. But without any further ado, let's roll the power supply install cable management time-lapse and then put some games on this machine and see just how well it really performs. I honestly don't know how anyone can think this machine doesn't look incredible, but looks aside, how well does it perform in games? As you can see, I've come pretty well prepared for today's gaming benchmark session. My favourite mouse since I got it about six months ago, the Corsair Harpoon Wireless. Uh, not only does it have Bluetooth, which is great for travelling and stuff, it's also got their low latency slipstream uh, 2.4 gigahertz tech uh, with RGB as well, which is really important for me at least as you can tell. Uh, and I've also got this, which is their Virtuoso uh, SE wireless gaming headset. Sounds fantastic, one of the best I've ever listened to. And the microphone actually kind of changes colors um, depending on if it's muted or not, which is super useful. Really comfy, so a big shout out to Corsair for these. I'm gonna be capturing all the gameplay you see on your screen now with their 4K60 capture card, the latest Mark II edition, at a super high bitrate, which means you can see uh, exactly how the gameplay here would look if you built the system yourself. So a big shout out to Corsair and Elgato, but let's kick it off with Apex Legends. 
As you can see here, we're gaming at 4K at 60 frames per second, uh, mainly around that 80 FPS mark, but always sticking above the key 60 FPS figure. At times of high action and kind of, as you can see here, me getting destroyed by the opposition, your frame rate is going to drop a little bit. But nevertheless, it provides a superb gaming performance. And I had no idea the 2060 Super was just so powerful. Moving on to CSGO, it's a game that people always ask me about whether I include it or not. Just go and take a look at those comments. I'm happy to report that 4K Ultra gives you 180 to 190 FPS average with low points at the 150, 160 mark and over 200 FPS on the higher end. That means if you've got a 1440p or 4K high refresh rate 144Hz monitor, you're more than covered. And of course, if you play at 1080p low settings, you're going to get hundreds and hundreds of FPS, but I don't think many people are on this machine. Moving on to Fortnite, a game some people love and some people hate. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'm, I'm actually genuinely really intrigued. Uh, I love it for anyone wondering, especially on the Nintendo Switch. But I digress. 150 plus frames per second at 4K uh, is super duper great results and provides a really playable experience. Overwatch is another game where you are sure as hell not going to be disappointed. 4K high settings is giving you 150 plus frames per second, which is bonkers. Uh, it's a game that people will always ask me about, like CSGO, and I try to include the most popular games in this bit of the video um, to kind of give you a real idea of just what to expect from a system like this. 2060 Super, 4K so far, is looking pretty good. Moving on to Forza Horizon 4, a game that I, I just literally love, even more than Overwatch, Fortnite or CSGO combined together. You see in a pinned 60 frames per second and that was tested during the game's built-in benchmarking mode, giving some really repeatable results. You can look back at my last couple of videos and see um, similar performance with slightly lower or higher frame rates depending on the budget of the build. Next up is Project Cars 2, 100 plus FPS is exactly what you should be expecting. Another game that I really love and I'm actually going to do like a full racing sim setup build guide uh, once I move into my new office. But for more about that, hit up Twitter, it's at Geekawatt where I share all the behind the scenes gossip and information. The final game on my list today is Grand Theft Auto 5. Now, uh, here you're expecting about 80-ish frames per second, once again on the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode. Um, and that's if you turn stuff like anti-aliasing down to 8 or 4 times, uh, V-Sync off, and some of these scaling down slightly. That does mean that this is a game maybe more suited to 1440p or 4K medium settings if you're looking to kind of tone up some of the scaling properties and the alias settings while also achieving in excess of 100 frames per second but for 99% of gamers or 90% of gamers I probably should say who are just on 60 hertz refresh rate panels this is going to serve you more than well. But I think that just about wraps it up for today's GeekerWatt video. If you did enjoy it, you know what to do. A big old like rating and please do get subscribed. It really does help me out. Thank you very much for watching though. And as always, we'll see you in the next GeekerWatt video.